Awaken from your stupor. Awaken from the sleep. This is the message that comes from Romans chapter 9. He awakens his own people, our own people, the Jewish people, who have forgotten about their Savior. I'm Pastor John from Living Stones and Sunland Tonga, Seventh-day Adventist churches, and it is time for our call to prayer. Hello, everyone. Yes, again, we have an awakening that must happen. And, and that awakening is a part of us, too, as Seventh-day Adventists. I am so glad that many of you came, whether online or on location, to the demolition. This week is number two of the demolition, and we will be talking about that very specifically on Sabbath. I'll have an advertisement as well coming up on Thursday for, you know, the message that will be this Sabbath from the demolition will blow you away. And how you, you always knew it was true, but you were surprised that it's being said. So, but we continue in Romans chapter 9, where Paul blows us all away as well as he had been building up a case saying, my own people who have separated themselves from God. Now, many people have uh, taken this part that I'm about to read as very predestinarian, and in fact, the concept of double predestination, which is... Uh, uh, Jean Calvin didn't really believe in this. The, many of his disciples did and fought for double predestination. But it's the idea that God predestines some for heaven and he also forms some to go straight to hell. And many people that are non-Christians say, I don't want to follow a God like that. But nowhere in the Bible do you find this idea except right here. You have to understand, to understand this text, what he's trying to do to awaken his own people of which he's speaking to, the Jewish people in Rome as well as those who are non-Roman. But you can tell very specifically he's speaking to the Jews in Rome. It's almost like if I was speaking to a bunch of Seventh-day Adventists and trying to get them to awaken and the kinds of things that I might say or he might say, or whoever might say, to awaken a people up. Sometimes it's offensive, sometimes it doesn't really, it's not understandable outside of the context. Well, let's get the context, because the rule of the Bible is if you don't understand something, read on, and you'll discover what it really means. So let's continue to read. He had said here that Jacob actually wasn't the one that was first born. But he chose him to be Israel, not Esau, but Jacob. You see that? So God chooses whom he wants, not the one born first, the one whom he wants. I'll have mercy on those I have mercy, and I'll have compassion on those who I have compassion on. Verse 16, it does not therefore depend. This is in Romans chapter 9, verse 16. Follow with me. It does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. This immediately, when I read this, it hit me. There's another text that's amazing from John chapter 1. Turn with me, and then we'll go back here. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made, and without him was made nothing that was made. In him was life, and that life was a light of all men. That light shines in the darkness. Okay, so now let's keep on moving down. We're going to go to verse 10. He was in the world. It was referring to Jesus. He was into, in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. So the world doesn't understand him, right? Jesus made the world, but yet the world doesn't get him. Does that make sense? Let's keep going because we're going to get to this text that is a direct parallel to that in Romans that Paul was writing. Verse 11, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Hmm. He came to the Jewish Israelite people, but they didn't receive him as a, as a people. 
Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So we become true children of God by believing. Let's continue. Children born from God. Children born not from natural descent. Verse 13 this is. Not born from natural descent. Not from human decision or husband's will. But born from God. In other words, not born by genetics. Not born by situations in this earth. But born because of God. Making a choice because we believe in him. So that belief, we believe in him and he in turn believes in us. It's a, it becomes a symbiotic circle between us and Jesus. That is the power of salvation. It does not come by our works or our flesh or our stuff we can do or that which we can eat or not eat. It comes from the will of God and his power to save us from ourselves if we but believe in him. I will have mercy on those I have mercy. I have compassion on those I will have compassion. Back to Romans chapter 9. It does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, Moses, in the book of Exodus, says to Pharaoh, I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power to you, and that my name may be proclaimed on the earth. In other words, God gave the Mo Moses the message, but Pharaoh hardened his heart. And because Pharaoh hardened his heart, did not believe, right? When his hardening happened, then now we have this amazing story of how God pardoned the Red Sea and how the 10 plagues destroyed Egypt. If Pharaoh had not hardened his heart, the power of God would not have been made manifest, but made manifest. So did God choose Pharaoh to not do what was right? Well, in this context, Paul is saying yes, only because we're dealing with the children of Israel and the choices they're making. He's trying to reach people. Now, as you know, when the Spirit of God comes into your life, it all depends on how your consistency is to Him. If you drop an egg, which is soft, you know an egg, you break it, it can go all over the place, but you put it in boiling water, it hardens. You take a potato that is very hard and you boil it in that very same boiling water and it becomes soft. The question is, is it your heart a potato or an egg? Are you a potato or an egg? I want to be more like a potato. I want to soften in the presence of Jesus. But we all have issues when we are asleep and we think we're in charge and yet we're asleep and we're blind guides. We become harder in the presence of God because we have to always be right. Why do we always have to be right all the time? It is so overrated. But here's what Paul says about his own people. Therefore, verse 18, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy and he hardens whom he wants to harden. The boiling water will do what it does, right? That question is the one that plagues us all. Say, is God a God that wants people to be hurt? My answer, of course, is no. And interestingly enough, as we read through, here's going to be a bunch of texts I'll read that are from the Old Testament that Paul is quoting here. He's going to talk about how he wants his own people to come back. If really, if really, Paul believed that they were lost forever, why would he even write the book? He didn't believe that. This is eloquent so that we might change. But I digress. Let's awaken. Let's awaken. So we read here, verse 19. One of you will say to me, 
then why does God still blame us? For who is able to resist his will? Verse 20, he says, but who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what the formed say to the one who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Well, I'm the same way. God, I hate how I was made. Why? And God says back to me, because I want you to do something for me. I can hate him for it, but in the end, I'm made this way. Do I have to like it? Well, no, I don't have to like it until I learn that I myself am made for a reason. And you know what? I found that out in my life. Not all of it, but I've learned that I'm made in a certain way for a reason. And I must keep morals in the center. For oftentimes when we don't like ourselves, what we do is try to build something on our own and we turn to the three A's. The three A's addiction, adultery, and abuse. And that is exactly what Israel of old had turned to. Addiction. To the Bible and power and using it for their own ends. Adultery. Oh, we saw that all through. Even the woman who was caught in adultery, many of those people in the temple had probably bedded her down. We know that because when Jesus starts writing the sins of her accusers in the sand, they walk away fast. And three, abuse. Yeah, when we hate ourselves, we destroy others because we hate them more. We must learn to do unto others what we would want them to do unto us. And we will learn to love what our mission is. Having God in your life will change your life. You must awaken. Now, I wasn't able to get to all the text here that I wanted to. We're going to continue Awaken Part 2 next week, but I hope I'll see you on Sabbath for the demolition. As we go through this, I want you to discover yourself and then our church to grow in power and love because of it. God bless you all, and I'll see you because we're going to start praying for others in a few moments. It's time for intercession. I'll see you then. 715.